dependent drop downs where you've got incredibly long lists where you can't feasibly create separate dependent lists for every single item that start from the very, very beginning. I'm just going to take my first list from the example page. Let's do that. This is your first list that you want on the drop down. It's completely fixed. If you need to make that dynamic, then use some of the techniques in some of my other videos. So this is our product subcategory. Now, our second list is going to be our list of products, and it's going to depend on the subcategory that we've picked. We're going to create one second dynamic list that's just going to change depending on what item has been picked from that first list, and then link that second one to our drop down. So if we just copy from here, just to keep things simple, right, so column H. So we want our product subcategory. So we'll just copy and paste again from there. I'm gonna use form controls. So form controls you get from the developer tab. So we need to make it a bit wider. I mean, in essence, we want it roughly the same width as that. So that's 212. So we could also make it 212 but I'm going to make it back 220 because we've got the sort of drop down arrow on the end. So insert form control, we want this form control combo box, holding down alt there. So it means we can line everything up to the corners, right click, format the control, straight to the input range. Our input range is this list, cell link is going to be there. This is going to tell us which item has been picked. So I'm just going to call that item chosen. So when I click on that, computers and prohibitals, item number five. I'm going to left align this and I'm going to make this grey just so that it's slightly lighter. Now item text. So I want this to say computer prohibitals, peripherals, sorry, or envelopes. I'm going to use an index match, but I'm going to use full column ranges. So an index is basically going to allow you to pick a row or a column or both from a range of data. So what's our range of data? Well, this is what I mean by full column ranges. I'm going to click on the column header and I say, I want to pick something from column C. And what row number do I want to pick? Well, it's no longer, no, it's not number 12 because it's actually we pick pens and art supplies. It's number 16. So we need to pick 16th item. How are we going to do that? We're going to find the row on which number 12 sits. And the way we do that is use a match formula. So we pick match. What are we looking at? We're looking at number 12. Where are we looking for it? We're looking for it in the whole of column B. Are we trying to match it exactly? Yes, of course we are. We don't need to worry about the column number. It's an optional thing. We've already said we're looking in column C, so there's only one column anyway. Close that, depends on our supplies, comes up. All right, so this is what we're gonna use now in our pivot table. Next, we want the pivot table. So data, we're gonna make the, the pivot table from our main data table. And I've already made this into an actual table. As long as all your data is together, so it's, you know, there's no gap, no blank rows or blank columns or anything, you can literally click anywhere in it and click Control T, and that will allow you to create it as a table. And the advantage of that is that anyone starts putting extra data on the bottom, you can see it sort of adds another row. And that means that your pivot table, if it's linked to a table, will automatically expand and cope with new data coming in. So again, another great flexibility tip that I have now use all the time, to be honest. So I'm going to click anywhere in this table and insert pivot table. And I'm going to put it on my existing worksheet. I would always advise putting pivot tables on separate worksheets, but I'm just trying to keep it on one sheet for the purposes of this example. Actually, I'm just going to put it here because I'm going to put filters on top. So I'm going to say that. Click OK. Right, so we want our product subcategory as our filter because we're going to link it to whatever was picked here. So when this says pen art supplies, we want this to say pen art supplies. And then we want it to generate a list of products that relate to that. So, for example, let's just uh, pick appliances on both. So, when that says appliances, this here will be our list second drop down. To populate. So a couple of things we need to do on this pivot table. Right, firstly, uh, I'm going to move the whole thing down two rows. 
right? So I can do Control Shift Plus, Shift Cells down. That allows me to put up there this too. <laughs> but more importantly, we need an item count. We're going to put this item count. Now we can't use a count, sorry, we need to use count A because we're counting text items. We need to count how many items are in this list. So we're going to start there, and if I hold down Control Shift, now we don't just want to go to the bottom of there, I want to hit it again, the down arrow again. So we've got every row on the spreadsheet. Hit enter, 73. Slight issue, the word grand total is at the bottom. We don't want that. So we just go to the design of our pivot table, grand totals, and we can just switch them all off for now. You see that number's now gone down to 72. If you want it to look exactly like mine, I think I picked something like, something like that, I think. So now we just need to link those two lists together. Right, how do we do this? Right, assign a macro. Example, drop down, change, that will do. Yes, I'm going to record it. Okay, so my recorded macro is me clicking, say, envelopes. Okay, go to developer, stop recording. Right, Alt F11, I'll take me in here, put it in here. Now, let's just delete that macro one that was me messing about earlier. This is the one we've just recorded. So let's have a look at it, right? What's it doing? So it's saying, take the pivot table, pivot table two, take the field product subcategory, clear all the filters. Take the same pivot table, same field, and set it to envelopes. So if we edit this code, so instead of it saying envelopes, we can make it equal whatever that cell says, we're good to go, yeah? So the way that I like to do this, right, is I give this a name range and refer to it in a name range. I could say, oh, it equals cell I6. So I could literally go in here and say something like, oh, equals range I6. And I have to put dot value, okay? That'll do the job until somebody moves this cell and then, or you insert a column or something and it'll all go hellwire, right? So no, don't do that. So click on that cell, go up here and just give it a name. I'm gonna call this prod uh, subcat. And then you gotta hit the enter key. Don't click out of it because it won't record it. Hit the enter key. When you click in, it should reappear as, as that. Take that, copy it, control C, Go back to your VB editor, and then instead of that range there, put that in. So now, even if this gets moved, it's still got the same name, and your macro is still going to work. Is it going to work? Yes, look. So it's simple. Actually, this line of code here, clear filters, is completely superfluous. You do not need to clear the filters because you're picking a new filter each time anyway, so there's no reason to clear them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all of that. We do that. Look at that. One line of code. Just check it still works. Yeah, rubber bands. Right. Now, this is jumping around like I don't know what, isn't it? A little bit annoying. One of my pet hates with pivot tables, auto resizing. Guess they're kind of useful, but I just switch it off. Go to your options on pivot tables. First page, layout format, auto fit column widths. Don't want that. So now we've got kind of a fixed column width and yeah, things are sticking out and over and all of that. But it doesn't really matter. We're going to hide all of that in a minute anyway. Okay, so now we need a new drop down list and we need it based off of what's in here. So how are we going to choose this? We're going to put in a new one then. So another form control. So form control, combo box. We're going to need something way wider, aren't we? Probably something more like out here at least. So we're going to say product, and we're still going to need an item chosen. That's just copied that. So you can just simply delete that, it's fine. We're going to need to format this control. So the cell link we know is that. But what's the input range? Well, it's, it's this pivot table, yeah? But you don't know how many rows this pivot table is going to have, which is why we've got this row count here. So we need an input range and we need a formula in here. So we're going to link it to a named range. So we're going to have a dynamic named range on this that lists everything on that pivot table. So we're just okay that for the moment. 
let's set up our named range. So name manager, we're gonna give it a new name range. I'm gonna call this another one N product list. Hopefully I've not already done this one. And it's gonna be an offset formula because offset returns a range of cells based on a criteria, sort of starting point and size of the range. So our starting point will be here. Now you might say, well, why not pick there? General best practice, picking a header row as your start point for a dynamic range is, is a better idea. If people start inserting rows at row one, then the header row hasn't moved. Whereas if you started your list at, at the first item in the list and somebody decides to put one in front of that, or they resort it or something like that, you can end up with your start position moving and causing errors. So pick your header row as your starting point. Your start offset is always going to be one. In other words, you're going to move down one row from your header row before you start creating your list and you're not going to move any columns. So this is going to be a zero for the number of columns. How long is your list? So that cell there. That's obviously an item count. So it's always going to, going to change as the list change. How wide is your list? It's going to be one column wide. And we're clicking OK. So that's end product list. So I'm going to close that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make that say end product list. So now this list is basically what's in that pivot table. And this list changes the pivot table, therefore changes what's in this list. It's always exactly the right length. That's got 87 rows in it. I mean, you can't count them, but trust me, it's got 87. I'll pick the bottom one, X rack. You can see, we go to the bottom, there you go, X rack file for hanging folders. Right, so next we need to bring up the item text. So you could do this very simply in this particular case because you can just use an offset from that start header row on the pivot table by the number that's been chosen. See, no columns. And that will always give you the right answer because this is being driven from a pivot table. So now all that remains to be done is basically put in our output data. I'm going to close this up just to keep it simpler. Use shortcut key, alt, shift and arrow to the right to group that. So I'm going to copy just the format of this for the moment. And I'm going to delete, delete those formulas because we're going to do it from the start. I want to base this on customer segment, which is something in this data table on here, but we could have said any other information in this data table, it doesn't matter. The key thing is that it needs to be in the same data table as the item that's being picked. So our sales then, we're going to use sum ifs, the sum range. So we go to our data, nice and simple at sales. Right, criteria range one. Let's do the product first. I'm using all these arrow key shortcuts, basically control jumps around with the arrow keys and control shift allows you to highlight while you're jumping. So that's the product name. So what is the product name that we're looking at? Well, we want that one. Now it's put the sheet name in front of it. I'm just gonna hit F4 because it's fixed. I don't like the sheet name in front, which makes the formula longer and it just means that when you copy and paste it to a different sheet, it doesn't work. So that's our first thing. So we want all the sales. So that's going to give us, if we just stop there, give us all the sales for that product. We want it based on the customer segment small business. So we need to say that we want to pick the customer segment back to here. What customer segment? That one. That is going to vary. The row is going to change as the formula is copied. So I'm just going to fix the column. And then again, I'm going to get rid of sheet name. So you can see we're doing a sum if uh, we're looking for the product and customer segment combination sales. Okay, and I can copy that down there. Control D. I can copy that formula over to there. And this is one advantage of tables for sure. I can just change that word sales for profit and it gives me a drop down list there that hit tab to select it, hit enter, control D there. And there we go. There's our sales and profit. Is it working? Well, let's pick a different product. Yeah. Highlight that. Alt F1. Instant chart. 
hold the actual alt key as you move it around it will click onto the cells or so uh, i'm just going to do something like that pretty awful looking chart doesn't matter because on our chart design here that looks pretty good i mean pick your own but I'll stick with that one like i used in the example chart type column chart first one looking good colors there power four in this case add some data labels data labels oh dear we're in a bit of a mess now right so let's get rid of that anyway we've got our axes sort of overlapping everything on our axis in fact i'm going to move that up here somewhere for the moment out of the way so our actual axes right click format axes what we want is we want the labels instead of next to the axes we want it low because we're going to deal with negative numbers when we've got stuff next to the axes doesn't really work and then we're also going to move that down take up a bit more room because we can and now we can tidy up the title so click on the title there at the equal sign and click there so that will pick up that title i can drag it over there some of our uh, products have got very long names indeed so i'm going to drag that under there like that Maybe we want this a bit bigger, actually. That looks pretty good. And then let's pick a really long one. Oh, yeah, I reckon. <laughs> I changed my mind. Let's put that over there. And in actual fact, we could just do something like this. And we can expand the font sizes a bit. And that's kind of looking pretty good, apart from the fact I've just picked something that's got virtually no data. But other than that, looking pretty good. So final sort of a tarting up, if you like hide these rows control 9 or hide things control 9 control shift 9 unhide but control 9 hide it so one more final feature is turn off these grid lines and get it looking a bit nicer view grid lines they've gone click that download link it's straight to your computer no details required nothing like that all for you to use distribute do what you like with keep learning with up for excel and I'll see you soon.